Welcome to Learn Spoken English. Please subscribe to the channel. Morning Dewdrop Part 1 I will accept you as my wife if you can walk barefoot over burning coals. As soon as she stepped into her father-in-law's house after marriage, she was shocked to hear such words from her husband Jack. Everyone present is looking at Jack with surprised eyes. Jack, what are you talking about? Sister, this is our husband and wife's matter. You better not touch it. When Jack's sister Victoria said something, Jack raised her hand and stopped her and said Catherine's intention. Do I have to repeat what I just said, or will you do it? Catherine is standing with her head bowed, and currently, she has nothing to say. Now, Jack will tell her what to do, and she must do just that. Catherine has no inclination to do anything with her hands and feet bound, so she nods in agreement without thinking much. A satisfied smile appears on Jack's lips. Jack, will you stop this nonsense, or should I leave from here? Jack said to his guard, ignoring his sister's words. Deliver the sister carefully to her father-in-law's house. If I go, Catherine will also come with me. My wife will stay with me, and I will do as I please. Because I have more rights over Catherine, so you don't talk too much this time. After our parents passed away, I treated you like my own child, and you. I haven't given you the kind of upbringing that would make you so harsh on a girl. Jack becomes very angry this time and addresses the guard with intent. Didn't I tell you not to wait here and to go and bring sister? Why are you still standing here? The guard, frightened by Jack's scream, rushes to Victoria and forcefully takes her away. Meanwhile, the floor has been decorated with burning coals. Catherine is standing alone wringing her hands, looking very frightened. The girl who used to scream loudly when cutting her own hands must now walk on burning coals. Catherine's chest feels heavy thinking about it. Tears are rolling down her eyes. Come quickly, if you don't do that. The coal will turn to ashes. Catherine trembled at Jack's words, still moving towards the burning coals with trembling legs. At one point Catherine stood in front of the coals. Once she looks at Jack thinking that Jack will stop her. But Jack proves her wrong as Jack tells Catherine to go ahead with a wink. Two drops of water fell from Catherine's eyes. Catherine wiped the tears and said to herself without thinking, Catherine, you can do it. If you do it, you may suffer temporarily. If you don't, it will cause a lot of damage. The words echoed in her mind and Catherine raised the sari with both hands. Lifting one foot to place it on the burning coals, Catherine lacks the courage, so she withdraws her foot. Once again, she attempts to place her foot on the coals but withdraws it again due to lack of courage. Catherine looks towards Jack once more, and then Jack grins mischievously, showing her something. Seeing that, Catherine's throat dries up, and without thinking further, she places her foot on the coals, losing consciousness immediately due to the additional fear and mental pressure. Before Catherine collapses on the floor, Jack comes and holds her, lifting her from the coals. Jack is sitting in the drawing room looking at one sari after another. But none of those seem to be to his liking. Although many shopkeepers have brought the best saris to their shops, 
Jack doesn't like anything from there. Even after seeing many options, when Jack couldn't find a sorry of his choice, he accepted the defeat. These things are not possible for him, and whether it will be possible or not, who knows? If he has any idea about buying clothes for girls, it is unknown. Whether he has ever bought a sari for a girl or not. Jack now stands up from the chair and walks towards the kitchen, bringing Luna with him. See, which sari looks good here? Which one will be the best for Catherine? Luna seems as astonished as if she has seen the sun in the night sky upon hearing Jack's words. On the first day of his marriage who made her wife to walk on the burning coals, and he bought a sari for his wife. Luna, with wide open eyes, is looking at Jack in surprise. Jack is now very annoyed. Upon hearing Jack's words, Luna composes herself and stands up, speaking hesitantly. Young master, I don't wear saris. I wear three pieces. I have never bought a sari. All my clothes are given to me by Madame Victoria. How would I prefer the saris of a daughter-in-law? Jack, about to say something to Luna in frustration, decides to keep quiet and advances towards his room. As Jack enters the room, he sees Catherine sitting on the bed, looking at his feet. Jack, with his hand in his pocket, raises an eyebrow towards Catherine. In turn, Catherine, realizing someone is present, looks towards the door. Observing Jack in three-quarter pants and a black t-shirt, with his hand in his pocket, standing there with a raised eyebrow, Catherine gets up from the bed and faces Jack. Why is there no scar or mark on my foot? Don't ask me about that. Inquire about your own foot. See, I don't have the mood to joke around. I don't have any time to joke with you. Now, come with me. I won't go anywhere with you until you tell me why there is no scar or mark on my foot. I clearly remember placing one foot on the burning coals, but I don't know what happened afterward. So, based on that, there should be a scar or mark on my foot, shouldn't there? I don't like anyone talking to me like this. The first time, I didn't say anything to you. But if it happens again, no one will be bad like me. Now, quietly come with me. Jack's words are quite serious, and Catherine feels somewhat scared. So, without saying anything more, she quietly follows behind Jack. Take the saris that you like here. But I don't wear saris. I don't want to know what you should wear or not. Whatever I tell you to do, you will do. So, from today, you will wear saris, and I don't want to see anything other than saris. Now quietly select a sari, don't say much. After saying those words, Jack takes his phone and leaves. And Catherine is upset, looking at the sari. Catherine can neither wear a sari nor express her feelings. The struggle she went through to wear the sari for the wedding, no one except Catherine knows. However, since Jack has said it, Catherine has to do it, whether she likes it or not. So, Catherine is silently looking at the sari. At twelve o'clock in the night, after about twenty minutes, Jack comes to his house and finds that Catherine is not at home. Jack gets very angry, storms out of the house, and searches the entire house for Catherine. Even after searching for almost fifteen minutes, when he does not find Catherine, Jack returns to his house. He takes the phone to call someone, but at that moment, he hears a sound from somewhere. 
Jack is trying to understand where the sound is coming from and moves towards that direction. As the sound is coming from his own house, Jack carefully looks around and goes into the bathroom. When he sees what is there, after looking, Jack lets out a loud scream. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.